Hello everyone, this is Vicky for today's Virus versus Versus. Our topic for today is the blessing in forgiving. Our text is from Proverbs 19, 11. A man's wisdom gives him patience. It is to his glory to overlook an offense. Let us start by looking at three discoveries of how to enjoy our journey in this broken world. Number one, living with hurt feelings will never motivate us to make right decisions. Number two, an enemy in the heart is worse than 10,000 in the field. And number three, we dare not by God's grace. Let the wrong choices of others determine who we become. Why is the subject of forgiving so important? The subject of forgiving is important because we can make excuses or we can make progress, but we cannot make both. And the only way to live offense-free in the heart, in a world full of imperfect people, is to look to Jesus. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is the cancellation of a debt as if it never existed. For example, if you owe me $100 and in the process I told you that I forgive what you owe me, the effect is as if the debt never happened. How can we be good forgivers? We can be good forgivers if we can comprehend what Jesus has done to forgive us from our sins. 1 Peter 2.4 He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. Remember, forgiveness is a command, not an option. Luke 17, 4 says, Even if they sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. Forgiveness is a choice. It is not a feeling. Acts 7, 59 to 60. While they were stoning Stephen, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Stephen chose to forgive, even at the point of death. Forgiveness is a choice. Forgiveness is for my benefit, not for the benefit of my offender. 1 Peter 3.9 says, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. If you want to inherit a blessing and love life, you would have to be a good forgiver. Without a forgiving spirit, you will default and repay evil with evil and insult with insult. All of us have tendencies to retaliate, to lash out, to do evil, to quit praying and take matters into our own hands. But we have a choice not to, by the grace of God, if we would like to inherit blessings. Is it possible to still enjoy life when you suffer wrongfully at the hands of another? 
Definitely yes. If you have a forgiving spirit that does not keep score of wrongdoing. Proverbs 24, 17 says, Do not gloat when your enemy falls. When they stumble, do not let your heart rejoice. You can still enjoy life when you suffer wrongfully at the hands of another if you are willing to cancel a debt as if it never existed. This is likely if you practice unconditional love. In 1 Corinthians 13, 5-6, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Finally, you can still enjoy life when you suffer wrongfully at the hands of another. If you decide to abandon over to God what someone else has done to you. To forgive another is to release them from being in debt to you. It means you entrust justice to God instead of seeking it yourself. Lord, teach us to surrender to you, those that hurt us, and to remove any desire in us to get even by ourselves. Lord, help us. To remember that reliving the negative keeps us stuck where we are. And to understand that the pain of letting go of offenses is less than the pain of carrying them around. So if you are suffering pain at the hands of another today for whatever reason, why not pray this way today? Lord, Callous my knees and not my heart. Forgiving does not come naturally. But it becomes easier to forgive when we comprehend how much God has forgiven us. Remember, there is blessings in forgiving. God bless you. Until next time in Virus versus. Versus.